You all know the voices of the people in your lives. The feeling of hearing someone's voice after a long time not having heard it can be wonderful. Our voices are among the most unique aspects of us as individuals. So it may surprise you to find out that today, voices are eminently fakeable. To build a replica of someone's voice, you start with the raw material, recordings. Given a large enough collection of recordings and corresponding transcripts, a machine learning algorithm can learn to associate the text of the transcripts with the audio. We call this process training or learning because as more data is processed, the algorithm tends to become more accurate. Once this training process is complete, you can type in more or less anything you want and get back an audio clip of the person in question saying those things, even if that person has never said those things before. Hello, everybody. Oprah Winfrey here. I hope you're all enjoying yourselves at TEDxTO. Though I could not be there with you today, I would like to introduce you to Joe. He's here to tell you about why machines have gained a voice. <laughs> so the recordings used to train that algorithm actually came from a course that Oprah taught. So now know that whenever you speak publicly, you're making yourself vulnerable to future impersonation of this sort. This is part of a more general phenomenon known as deep fakes, in which all manner of media, audio, video, and written text can be realistically faked by algorithms. This also goes by the name of synthetic media. So currently, it's not that hard to tell what is a deep fake and what is authentic. However, the underlying technology, machine learning, will continue to improve, and eventually, it will be impossible to distinguish deep fakes from real content. I work at a Toronto-based AI startup company called Dessa. And Dessa has this culture of wildly ambitious side projects. So about a year and a half ago, a bunch of us were sitting around after work thinking about what we wanted to do. And we hit upon this idea to create simulations of famous people. The idea was to create a chatbot that you could talk to and that would talk back to you with the same voice and personality as anyone at least anyone with enough recordings and conversations available online from which we could extract the data that we needed to train our algorithms. As we started working on this, we, re we realized that perhaps the most visceral and shocking aspect of such an enterprise is the creation of voice. Because voices are so particular to individuals, to recreate a well-known voice is to access something deep in the mind of the listener. Six months ago, with my two brilliant colleagues, Hash Kadhim and Rehan Mama, we released a short video containing highly realistic generated clips with the voice of popular American podcaster, Joe Rogan. I can pronounce tongue twisters now. Check this out. Peter Piper picked a peck of pickled peppers. How many pickled peppers did Peter Piper pick? Hey, Joe Rogan, it's me, Joe Rogan. Please come save me, man. These artificial intelligence guys have trapped me in a machine. So hopefully it's obvious that Joe Rogan never actually said those things. Some of you may already be thinking about what you wouldn't want to hear a deep fake of you saying. Imagine you get a phone call from, or rather, even better, imagine somebody very close to you gets a phone call from someone or something that sounds exactly like you. I'll leave it to your imagination to what might happen next. Large-scale political manipulation will be attempted with this technology. A fake hidden camera video of a candidate saying damning things that they never actually said could be posted to social networks and shared millions of times before a response is mustered. The converse of this is that it gives plausible deniability people who have actually said or done terrible things, because they can always 
claim that it was faked. Perhaps the greatest risk collectively is to our shared sense of truth. Video and audio have been, for nearly a century, our gold standard for proving the authenticity of an event. We're on the verge of losing the assurance that the mere existence of a recording can be considered proof that an event took place. There is a lot at stake here. And to some of you, this may seem like the beginning of a terrifying new world order. We have a lot of work to do collectively to mitigate the problems that deep fakes will cause. But I want you to know that we already have helpful tools at our disposal and we'll continue to develop more. Let's consider the case of our impending loss of audio and video as a universal source of truth. Remember that articles and books can be deliberately misleading or contain outright lies, and we still utilize and trust in those. How is it that we trust the infinitely malleable medium that is text? The answer, of course, is there exist many cues which help us discern what is truthful and what is not. What's changing now is that we'll increasingly need to apply the same mindset to the world of audio and video. One thing that could be done, at least in the interim, before deepfakes become indistinguishable from real content, is that machine learning can be applied to detect deepfakes. Just as you can train an algorithm to produce deepfakes, you can train one to detect them. This might make it possible for us to detect deepfakes which are extremely difficult or impossible for humans, unaided humans, to discern. However, over the long run, this cat and mouse game between detection and generation is a losing proposition. Over the long run, we may come to rely upon more radical solutions. One possibility is to make use of specially designed cameras to ensure that a signature of a recording would be unalterably encoded into the public record at the moment of creation, proving that it could not have been tampered with. The idea would be to have a public blockchain that anyone could use to authenticate their content. Perhaps one day all of us will have easy access to such a tool. My point here is to convey that human civilization is both resourceful and flexible and we will develop solutions to address this new problem. One thing that makes this problem harder to address today is the nature of social media. Sensational content tends to make it to the front page of our news feeds because it's naturally intriguing and, frankly, entertaining. <laughs> Rather like a salacious political deepfake would be. In May of this year, a video of Nancy Pelosi surfaced in which she was shown to be slurring her words. This video wasn't even a deep fake. It was a so-called cheap fake in which the creator had simply slowed down a real video and modified the pitch, giving the impression of a drunk speaker. This video spread virally on social media and was viewed millions of times. Now, Social media companies like Facebook have resisted addressing this problem. I believe that these companies have a responsibility to not amplify what amounts to harmful, defamatory identity theft. Now, some of you may be thinking, hold on, Joe. Aren't you one of the people that creates this stuff? <laughs> well, I have made deep fakes. I take very seriously the responsibility to do no harm. And there's a world of difference between what bad actors will do and what my colleagues and I do. Our aim is to showcase the, te the technology, to raise awareness about it, not to actually deceive people. As a machine learning engineer, I love to build things. This quote from Nikola Tesla sums it up nicely. I do not think there's any thrill that can go through the human heart like that felt by the inventor, as they see some creation of the brain unfolding to success. Such emotions make one forget food, sleep, friends, love, everything. Most of what I work on day to day 
has nothing to do with deepfakes, but it just so happens that I work in a truly universal field. Machine learning is the science of pattern recognition and recreation. Patterns in anything and everything. Machine learning will just as well process credit card transaction data to identify fraud as it will generate synthetic voice to create new fraud. The truth is I got into this voice stuff because I thought it'd be a fun project to work on with my colleagues. It was only after we started working on it that we fully recognized the broader implications. And I believe this will be a recurring trend for the field of AI. Ambitious young creators will work on the coolest applications they can think of and may not always give enough forethought to the implications of their creations. It's incumbent on those of us that work in this field to be mindful about what we're creating and what we're releasing. For instance, in doing this work, we were careful to not release anything that would make it easier for others to reproduce our results. Making it more accessible would also make it easier for bad actors to use it. There's also a special responsibility that the creators of deepfakes have. It's a strange power to suddenly have. That is to be the puppeteer of a real person. On the one hand, it's incredibly fun. And on the other hand, it's tremendous responsibility. It would be far too easy at this moment to tarnish a person's reputation or even destabilize a democracy. As a machine learning engineer, this weighs on me, but I'm also mindful of the potential for good this technology provides. It will enable us to bring great personalities back into the world. I, for one, would love to see a science lecture delivered by a revived Carl Sagan. As these technologies mature, and over the long run, it will enable us to paint flexibly in the medium of video. This will unleash a new wave of creativity in film that we can scarcely imagine today. One day, a teenager will recreate Game of Thrones on their laptop without hiring any actors or filming anything at all. The transition to this new world is going to be difficult, and we're not being proactive enough. What tends to happen in the development of dangerous new technology is that people wait until there's been a disaster before inventing solutions that eventually mitigate our problems. I don't believe the problems of deepfakes are insoluble. Far from it. I believe that it's well within the capacity of our civilization to absorb it. We've undergone changes far greater than this before. And when we do finally come to grips with deepfakes, we'll have a whole new world of creativity to look forward to. Thank you.